Good morning. Welcome back. Uh, as I said in the last episode, I have some stuff that I need to get done. And uh, who better to have join me than you? This uh, new addition, you can see I added some new plants from the last episode. These are my spider plants. For those of you who have been uh, traveling along with me in the Voodoo Garden for a long time, you remember these little babies. And for those of you who don't, let me give you a, a very, very, very quick update on these, okay? Uh, I think it was like a little over a year ago, I uh, bought this little spider plant from Walmart. You know, you can get them for a couple bucks. Well, I bought this itty bitty spider plant. I grew it my, in my room and uh, uh, it grew a lot faster than I thought it would grow. It went nuts. It got bigger and bigger. I transplanted it. And of course, if you transplant a spider plant, you're in for trouble because the more you, the more you give it, the more it gives back exponentially. They're like tribbles off Star Trek. Uh, they, they, it just went nuts. And she turned into this huge monstrosity of a thing that was taking over my life over on that side of the room. Well, I was wondering what I'm going to do with this thing. So what I did was I, I took her babies, you know, because spider plants, uh, basically spider plants are just a grass. And uh, what they do is they send out these, these runners like strawberries. And then at the end of the runners, there will be a little itty bitty baby plant. And that's generally that's the main way that they uh, uh, propagate themselves. And uh, I did some reading up on this years ago and it fascinated me about these plants is uh, that they will grow out in the wild, uh, their predecessors way, way back in the day before we domesticated them. It would just be this little tuft of grass growing in a, a maybe a not so uh, friendly environment, like between some rocks, you know, trapped. And it was growing and it couldn't go anywhere. So it started getting root bound. It started trying to find a way to survive. And plants are not as stupid as we think they are. I mean, some of them are delicious, but they're not stupid. What they do is they figured out a way to get around their obstacles. Who says plants aren't aware? They would send out this tendril. It goes up and then it arches over. And then it goes, it tries to get over the obstacle and it sends a new plant into where it hopes will be some soil and then it starts over new. So the mother plant can't really spread too far out, but she can send her babies out to a more uh, favorable environment. That's absolute, absolute beauty as far as I'm concerned. Nature has always fascinated me and this aspect of it is just beautiful as far as I'm concerned. Well, anyway, <laughs> I get off on a tangent. My little babies, my little spider babies, they grew and uh, this is what became of them. Yeah, they, they, uh, I told people last year I was going to get rid of them because I had enough of the spider plants in the, in the, the voodoo gardens. So I was going to toss them out. Well, after I, I turned off the camera on that program, I felt really bad that I was going to throw my little friends out and I couldn't do it. So I snuck them upstairs and I, <laughs> it was a little Anne Frank thing. I hit them upstairs and I uh, didn't talk about them. And, uh, they grew and they grew and uh, I've been cutting them back and they've been growing in these pots, these eight inch pots uh, since that day. And uh, they have no artificial light. They're uh, kind of off from a window. So this is all natural light, whether it be summer or winter, this is what they get, uh, the regular light from uh, uh, up there. They would have probably been a little bit healthier had they been growing underneath some artificial light down here where I can control the brightness and stuff, but I didn't have room. So. What I decided to do is now that I'm going to be uh, renewing the voodoo garden, uh, so to speak, some of the plants are going to go and some have to come back. It's the genesis. I mean, and the, the cycle of life in the, in the voodoo garden. Things go, things come in. Otherwise, you'd be seeing the same plants every day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the babies and show you how I pot them and get them ready to be big, beautiful plants. So if you want to do this yourself and you don't know how to do it, or you want to do it a different way, maybe you can follow along. I'm going to do this with the spider plant and the, the beauty that's over here, the purple passion plant. I'm going to show you how I do that because uh, she's in kind of a limited pot and transplanting these things never has worked out well for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some good, healthy cuttings. I'm going to start them off and get them ready. And then I'm going to make another big plant. So this plant may not be around. I may give it to somebody. Uh, uh, Mike has some friends. There's this girl that works at the Walmart and uh, I think she might enjoy this. So uh, he may take it into there and surprise her with it as a gift. So I may have a bigger and better plant because this has limits to what it can do in the pot that it's in. And I don't like limits. I never have liked limits. So I'm thinking, well, maybe I can do something better. A bigger pot with new soil, get it going. I can have a, an incredible 
plant, whereas I just have an average plant. I'm also going to go here with the arrow, arrowhead, and that's, this is one thing I didn't mention in last, uh, last episode, is that the LEDs, and I don't know why, I don't know a, a lot of things. The things I don't know could fill the void. Um, uh, it started standing up. Remember, it was kind of down a little bit and sprawling out. Well, it's now standing up. These are standing up taller, and it's doing a lot better. But what I want to do is, this was a smaller plant in a little pot. I just transplanted it into a bigger pot. So it's still a, a, a compact plant in a big pot. It's just vining out from the little plant in the middle. What I want to do is I want to get a bigger pot and plant a bunch of them in there so that it can grow out and be e even bigger than that. So as, as impressive as this is, it can be a heck of a lot better. So I'm going to show you this so that if you want to take smaller plants and make a better plant, this is the episode for you. All right, grab some coffee, cocoa, grab your kids, and uh, let's start having fun. All right, let's start with the basics. I always like starting with the basics. We have potting soil in here. Now, potting soil is going to be the foundation for a good, healthy plant, so you want to start out good. Uh, a long time ago, I did a program on miracle Grow potting mix. I wasn't too fond of it. I used to use it all the time, and then I wasn't too fond of it because I started seeing fungus gnats in the potting soil, and a lot of other folks did too. So I went on a little bit of a rant about it, and I even emailed them and uh, uh, asked them why uh, a, a giant corporation like that couldn't possibly get the one critter out of their soil that is going to affect their customers the most. Now, I, I'm not so arrogant as to assume my little email changed their, their minds, but it, it was about maybe, I don't know, a year. And then uh, I uh, couldn't find any uh, generic soil. I was using this no-name brand for the longest time. And, they, and uh, of course, Walmart and their infinite wisdom, if you like something, they'll stop carrying it. So they stopped carrying it. So I had to, go, I had to grab a bag of miracle Grow. When I opened it up, I examined it with my magnifying glass and couldn't find any fungus gnats whatsoever in it. And since that day, a while back, I haven't noticed any fungus gnats in their potting mix. Now, one thing I do notice about their potting mix is that, th by the way, this is not what it looks like when you open the bag. This is what it looks like when you open the bag. It's peat moss and, you know, broken dreams and stumps and who, who the heck knows what goes in their little nose hair. Well, it doesn't look like much and it has a little bit of vermiculite. Those white dots uh, are perlite. I'm sorry, not vermiculite, perlite. And that's just a mineral that they add in there to lighten it up. And uh, also, it holds water in a certain way. Now, they, do, they don't put very much in there. It's uh, kind of like a complementary amount. And that's not enough because this soil can actually get uh, compact and start. Have you ever uh, used potting soil and then you don't water your plant for a while? And then you water it and the water just kind of beads up on the top and it doesn't go in there? Sucks, doesn't it? Well, I've figured out a workaround for that. What I do is I put their potting soil in here. And you can see that this has a lot more white than this does. What I do is I buy vermiculite. And it looks like little pieces of cork. And uh, what I do is I mix it into here. So what I do is I throw in their potting mix. I add my own vermiculite. And the ratio, the rule really is not. I just give it a heavy peppering of it. So then I get a lot more vermiculite in there. And that keeps it from becoming that crusty uh, 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 soil that re repels water because vermiculite absorbs water, not too much water, but it absorbs water and holds it in its little, you can't see it, but it's got, it cleaves off. It holds it a little bit. And what that does is it keeps the soil from compacting up. And so that way I always have a loose workable soil in my plants. That's the basic, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I take these cups, these old plastic cups, solo cups, and uh, you can get them at the store for almost nothing. They have no holes in the bottom, and I don't put holes in the bottom because I don't need drainage out of the bottom. If I had drainage out of the bottom, I'd have to put something to catch the water. And that's just too much work for me. What I do is I use my brain. Yeah, it's in my head. And I use my brain, and I don't overwater my plants. You can get a feel for it. When you fill up this cup with regular potting soil, there's no moisture added to it at all. And then you just tap it down. And what I say is tap it down as gently as you would tap on your eyeball. Or tap it down here. And then feel the weight. Okay? Use your brain. It's not very hard to do. It's very, very simple. Feel the lightness of it. 
And then once you plant something in here and you water it, it's going to get heavier, okay? And you just generally figure out how much water is going to go in there. And if you overwater, just hold it and pour it out. And then remember, don't do that again. Water less next time. And then you wait. Once this cup feels light again, like it did in the beginning, it's time to water again. That's how I do all of my plants. And I have a lot of plants here. It's not hard to do. Okay, now that we... <laughs> We got Ray's little bozo no-no lessons out of the way. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna bring out, out a little knife. Make sure you have sharp scissors or a sharp knife. This is a folding knife that I have that has a razor blade on it. Do not let your kids play with this, otherwise you're gonna be paying for taking them to an emergency room because it is not a toy. Here's what the spider plant looks like. It's got this little plant on it. What you wanna do is you wanna wait until the babies have these little nubs on the bottom. Those are roots. And what I do is, I just take this and slice. And yes, I do leave a little piece of this on here. And uh, it, it's just my thing. I don't know why I do it, but I don't want to cut too awful close to this. And uh, it'll eventually rot away. Then what I'm going to do is, I already have my soil tamped down. And let me bring this to you so I don't have to bring you to it. I just push it down into the soil about maybe that far, okay? Yeah, it's gonna bury the leaves and everything, but spider plants are wonderful for getting past that. And then you just gently press it around there. Now, if you wanna hedge your bets and you want to make sure your plants are gonna root, you can get rooting hormone. It looks like flour or cornstarch. And what you do is you just dip your plant in there and it gets a little dusting of it on the plant and uh, then you put it into the soil and it encourages roots to grow. So some plants that are a little bit more difficult to root and we'll be getting to those. Now, by the way, this is the spider. Here, let me cut in front of you. Sorry about that. It's kind of rude for me to get in front of your face, but I'm not worried about that. All right, now here's how we're gonna water this. People have asked me, Ray, can you show me how you water your plants? Well, absolutely, I can show you that. Gently water it. You don't wanna flood it in there and you don't need to make sure that the water goes all the way to the bottom because your plant isn't all the way to the bottom. Later on, water a little deeper. But for right now, I know that this water probably goes right about down to here. Oh, I'm sorry. I had <laughs> it off camera. I'm so busy with doing what I'm doing, I can't uh, figure out what you're seeing. Okay, the water goes about down to here. If I watered a little bit more, it would go all the way to the bottom. Now, if you do over water, you can always turn it sideways and you can let it pour out the side. There. Keep this out of full sun for about maybe, I'd say almost a week. Keep it in regular house light for about a week and then you can put it into brighter light. This gives it time to form its roots. You don't want to put them in bright light right off the bat because bright light makes these things want to grow. They don't have roots to grow. So what they're going to do, draw energy off of their leaves in order to grow or stay alive. And that's why sometimes you'll see leaves wilting on these because it's drawing off of those to stay alive. Okay, now we got this one done. What I'm going to do is I'm eventually going to uh, plant these into a larger pot. You see how this one is in an 8-inch pot. There's a limit to how, how much of a plant I can get out of here. And I want to have a, another giant plant. So what I'm going to do is, by the way, this was just one uh, spider plant planted in there. Let me move this off to the side. I want to make sure that you see everything that I see so that you don't feel like you got left out. This was actually just one plant in there. And spider plants do make more plants. Look at that. I didn't put all those plants in there. They are experts at making more. And I could yank that up and plant all these into different pots, but I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this into a whole, bunch, a whole bunch of cups. Each one gets their own cup. And then once they're properly rooted and growing well, then I'm going to take a really large pot like maybe a, a 16 inch pot or something, and then plant these in there, like maybe one on the left, right, up, down, and one in the middle. And that way, they'll all fill in and I'll have an even better plant, a fuller plant in a larger pot that has the potential to get larger and healthier looking than these. So if you want a large spider plant, this is the method. Do about five of them, and that way you can space them out. You don't want to cluster them all up into that pot. You don't want to plant more than one here. You want to have each one have room for their roots to grow and in order to get a good start and then you're going to put them into the next pot. 
Okay, that's how we do spider plants. Let me move on to the next one. Oh, that's beautiful. Yep. <laughs> I am never disappointed when I, when I come into the room and I look at this beauty. It is just stunning. The purple goes well against everything else. Let me get the soil ready. That's the first thing I want to do. Reach across you. Get my soil. Okay, my soil's ready. Now, to find a good cutting. Now, if you have a plant that's starting to fail, what you want to do is you want to get the best looking cuttings to start your new plant. You don't want to take the crappy ones because if you're starting out with crap, you're probably going to get crap. So what I'm looking for is not something that's uh, leggy, and this isn't really leggy, it's just growing out. I don't want something that has a lot of stem and just a few leaves. What I want is something like right in the middle here. This is a beauty. I like this one. Go all the way down. With Purple Passion, you want to make sure, and just about anything else, that's why I got such a sharp knife, you want to make sure that you get a good, clean cut. And I'm going to give you a good close-up of that in just a second. What I'm doing, you can cut these off, but I'm just going to pull them off. You pull the leaves downward. And the reason I'm removing all these leaves is because while it's in the soil, it doesn't have roots for a while. And when it doesn't have roots, it can't support the leaves. The more leaves you have, the more pressure it has on the plant to support those leaves and that can cause failure. So it's better, I'm going to go ahead and cut these off right here, it's better to cut off all of these leaves. It will grow more later after it roots, okay? So we have about maybe four inches of stem. That's perfect. Now on the bottom, you want to cut it at a slight angle, like a 45 degree angle. And this is where the rooting hormone comes in handy. Some people say don't stick your plant in the rooting hormone, it'll cause disease. Well, your plant has to have a disease to cause a disease. My plants are not diseased. Toss it in there, bang it around, kind of like you're flowering chicken. You just shake it off. Then you got a little bit of white right here. Now, these cups are, I think, the 16 ounce. I'm not quite sure. I think they are, or 12 ounce. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to shove this stem in gently all the way till it almost touches the bottom. The more stem that's in the soil, the more roots can form along the stem and the healthier it's going to be and the better it's going to root. Now we're going to water this all the way around, nice and easy. And I watered this enough to make sure the water goes all the way to the bottom. Now if you want to cut holes in your cups, go for it. Like I say, whatever makes you comfortable, do it. So if you don't think that you can water properly uh, and keep it from flooding, by all means, cut holes in the bottom. And when I say cut holes in the bottom, don't cut holes directly in the bottom because if you put it in a tray, what's it doing? It's setting on that and it may not be able to flood out the side. Put holes right towards the bottom and that way the water can come out from the sides. And let me turn it sideways. Nope, see, we didn't overwater. There's no water coming out. Absolutely perfect. Keep this out of direct uh, sunlight and really bright light for about a week and then you can put it into the light. Now you're going to notice on a purple passion that the leaves may wilt. Don't worry about it. All we're concerned about is this, this center growing tip. As long as that's alive, the plant's alive. And once this thing gets going, it's crazy. So what I would do, the same with the spider plants, five of these is going to do beautifully in a pot because this one here, as beautiful as it is, this was one little plant. One little tiny plant in a cup, just like this one. It started out this. This is the predecessor of this. And then when I transplanted it, I put it in there and it had side branches growing out and I buried those underneath the soil so that it would make a bigger plant. Now, what I'm gonna do next time is go with a bigger pot and plant five, just like I told you with the spider plants. And that way I don't have to bury any stems and I have five individual plants and I believe it's gonna do better. It's gonna have more soil with a bigger pot, fresh soil and five new plants starting out. And this arrowhead is getting way out of, out of hand. As you can see, easily. As these things grow, they don't keep leaves all the way to the bottom. That's just not the nature of an arrowhead plant. As it grows, it can either grow straight up and you can uh, train it on a bark post. You can buy the bark posts at garden centers and jam the bark post in there when you start your plant. And what it'll do is, let me trim off one of these for you really quick and then I'll show you. 
These are crazy plus. Don't worry, it's not going to hurt anything. Okay, what they do is they will grow straight up and they will put these roots, support roots, into the bark. They will put in nice strong support roots to hold themselves as they grow. If you don't want to do that and have it grow straight up, you can be lazy like me and just let it vine over the side. It cascades down. What happens though is as it grows, everything behind the growing part dies out. That's just the natural way that these things go. So you got to keep picking off all these dead leaves. Now here's a cutting that we're going to do a, a rooting with. Now you don't have to use that much because these, let me show you what it looks like. Let me just trim all this off right here. Okay, that goes down. Now look at this. All along here you can see at every junction where a leaf comes out, there are roots. Now, just like uh, the Purple Passion, we want to pull off these roots, pull down, but look, underneath this leaf are these little tiny roots. Yeah, you're going to see little roots popping out all over the place. Just gently pull them off or you can uh, slice them off with this if you're not as uh, comfortable uh, yanking off leaves. Trim them off. Don't worry about getting everything off. Okay, now we have three leaves. That's going to be perfect. All right, and look at all this. All of this stem is going to get buried right up to here in the cup of soil. And of course, that's very easy to do. Just jiggle it around. Push it all the way down to the bottom. And of course, I'm going to add just a little bit more soil to that and then water it. And you treat it just like you do the spider plant or uh, the purple passion. Keep it out of direct light, I mean direct sunlight, strong light for about a week and then you're fine. We're going to leave all of these in their cups and let them grow strong. And then once we can see the new growth starting, we know that we have roots. Don't keep popping these out of the soil to check their roots. No. <laughs> Don't be tempted to do that. And don't feel bad if a leaf wilts. That's just the plant going through the transition because they don't grow roots instantly, okay? It takes a little time. The rooting hormone does help. And also, don't let them dry out totally. Just keep them slightly moist and you will definitely see some uh, growth on these. Now, if you lose one, don't worry. Nothing is perfect. You can do everything according to the book and you'll lose a cutting. It happens. Be okay with it, toss it out, and start another one. This dun cane, or Diefenbachia, I'm not taking cuttings from. I was tempted to do it, but I decided not to. But I wanted to show you something, because uh, folks have asked me about these. Uh, if you can take cuttings from these, and if you do, how do you do it? I'm going to just show you really quick, okay? Um, along the stem, as one of these grow, they have leaves coming out. Now what you want to do is you want to pull these leaves off, as the plant grows because the whole idea behind growing a dumb cane is to have a long elegant stalk with a, a display of leaves at the top that always seems to give it the best look with dragon trees which are dracaena or dumb canes this is usually the best look now i'm gonna take you right off the tripod and shove your face right into this plant so you can see something that you may not have noticed right down here. Look at all these nubs. At every single section where there was a leaf, you're going to see nubs. Those are potential roots. Yes, all of those are potential roots. If I were to bury this up to here, all of those would form roots and the plant would get exponentially stronger and healthier. Now, if you have a, a, an old wimpy plant that you just don't want anymore, but you don't want to get rid of it, you want to start new ones, I've done this before. You take the bottom, and this is drastic. You cut your plant off if you want to start brand new. Cut it off at ground level, and then you take stalks that are about six inches long. Cut them straight across with a knife, and you jam them in there until just the top couple inches are showing and the rest is underneath the soil. What will happen is, at the top, it will put out these new shoots like this, and you'll have like one, two, three, maybe even four growing out of close to the same area. Here's another one growing here. Now that's one way to root them, all right? And uh, there's another way. This is kind of fun too. You can take the whole stock or six inch section, lay it down and bury it in a trough until just the top part of that stock is showing just a little bit. And then you keep it moist. What will happen 
is it'll put roots down from the buried parts all along that stalk and you'll get new shoots all along the stalk here and then you'll have a whole bunch of new plants. I've done that as well too and that's a fun experiment. Always make sure that you don't plant the greenish section even though this is green all the way down. This is the hard stalk here and this is the softer growing part. This doesn't root quite as well as this is here. This is only if you want to get rid of an old plant, like your grandma gave you a plant that's all spindly because she didn't have any light in her apartment and you don't know what to do with it. Chop that baby down, start over new in a new pot of soil and you're going to be glad that you did. I got tools all over the place. And yeah, I do make a mess. Don't worry about making a mess. If you're not making a mess, you're not doing it right. Gardening should not be a neat and clean adventure. It should be messy. You should have dirt under your fingernails, but you should have a big smile on your face when you're done. That's proper gardening. You can take that to the bank. <sighs> what a mess. <laughs> I only did a few of them as samples, but as soon as I turn off the camera, then I'm going to move all of these props aside. I'm going to sit down on the floor. I'm going to start chopping and planting because, you know, that's just what I do. Uh, if you have any questions about propagating your plants or if you're just a little bit scared to do it, don't be scared. Give it a shot. You'll never know unless you try. All right. But if you do have any questions about your plants or you want to know exactly how to do something, I'll, I'll give you the best answer I possibly can. Post your, uh, your question in the comment section below. I'm always here for you. Okay. Well, until next time, <laughs> cross your fingers and hopefully I'll have some good results with these on the next episode. Until then, this is Ray and his little cuttings. We're out of here. Me and my mess. I should have said me and my mess is out of here. Uh, are you over there? You over here? Oh, this is junk. Compost. Yes. <laughs>